Hey, this morning, um, we got a special treat for you this morning as we, uh, how many enjoyed your Thanksgiving this past week? Amen. You, I trust you had a great Thanksgiving, spending time with family, or maybe you just had a wonderful time just getting alone with God. However, we know that as believers, that Thanksgiving is year round for us. Amen. Every day is a day of Thanksgiving. Every day is a day we wake up and say, Lord, thank you. Thank you for the day that you've given me. Amen. And so, we pray that your Thanksgiving continues on, and uh, so we praise God for what he's doing in your lives, your families, and here at the church, amen. And one of the things that he's doing, he continues to raise up uh, young ministers, and this morning, Brother Darius Gaucher, one of our own, he's been with us for years, and uh, this morning, he's going to be sharing God's word, and he's going to be staying on the subject of grace that I have been on for these last couple of months and uh, so I'm looking forward to hearing what God has laid upon his heart. And so I pray that this morning we will be blessed by Brother Darius. As, uh, Brother Darius, there he is. Would you make Brother Darius welcome here this morning, amen, as he comes to the pulpit? Amen. This young man is right now currently in Bible college, and uh, we praise God for what he's doing in his life. And uh, so he's excited about bringing God's word this morning, so let us have it, amen. Thank you, Pastor. Oh, so, uh, there was another administration in the last time I was up here. Uh, so it's been a few years. So thank you, Pastor, for the opportunity. Uh, I just want to start out with a quick, quick prayer. Dear me, Father, Lord, I just thank you for this opportunity. Lord, I pray that you use my lips, Lord, and, you, and just watch my heart, Lord. And I pray that you open the ears that they hear the word that you have, Lord. Again, Lord, I just thank you for allowing us all to be here to receive your word. Father God, we just pray that hearts will be touched and that they will hear you and that they will draw closer to you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, I'm going to try to break the ice a little bit. I'm going to tell you a, a little joke here. There was a man who died and went to heaven. And uh, St. Peter said, hey, welcome, welcome. He said, you saved? He said, yeah. You born again? He said, yeah. You baptized? He said, yeah. He said, great, great, great. Well, we're about to start giving out awards in a minute. So can you name a time of something that you've done while you were on earth to, uh, so you can receive your award? So uh, the gentleman thought about it. He said, oh, yeah, I can remember a time. Black Hills, Montana. I remember a woman being accosted by a bunch of bikers. And I stepped in and I intervened. He said, so I went for the biggest biker pushed his bike over, ripped his nose ring out of his nose. He said, wow, that's pretty impressive. When did that happen? Just a few minutes ago. <laughs> Hope you guys get a kick out of that, okay? Um, as Pastor stated, uh, we've been on the subject of grace. And... Uh, the Lord has uh, really been doing some things in my life since the last time I, I had a chance to chat with you. Uh, I went through many things and still gone through things. And I, uh, I always like to share my stories with you. Uh, most of you kind of know who I am and that has been here. But uh, my journey to get here took a lot of grace. So the one thing I'm going to tell you about grace right now, if you're a parent of a child that's not saved or or just living out in the world. My mom was a praying mom. It took me about almost 50 years to get here. She, when I left home at 18, you, I told her, you'll never catch me in another church again. I said, I'm not doing it, because I grew up in, in a, a church home. I grew up in a Pentecostal home. My dad was a, a preacher, pastor. So I did everything I could to try to get away from that life, because I didn't like being told what to do. So most of you guys know I joined the Army. So that was my way of getting away from authority. Okay. <laughs> but it's God's grace. It's God's grace. Uh, God's grace that kept me. All right. As Pastor expounded uh, just a few weeks ago, he was, we talked about grace, and I'm just going to recap on some of that. Um, I'm going to go back to the definition of grace. Um, that's the Hebrew word, word is chin, favor, acceptance. The Greek definition of it is cares, goodwill, favor, thanks, favorable regards. 
The definition of grace according to spirit, scriptural use is unmerited favor, strength, ability, power, and favor. Okay. So if you guys really want, will turn with me to Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. I'll wait till I hear the leaves, the pages stop turning, should I say? Okay. And I'm in the King James Version. I'll, I might skip it up a little bit, but I will give you time, time to catch up with me. So Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 says, For by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourself. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Jesus Christ, Christ Jesus, unto good works, which God have before ordained that we should walk in them. Uh, I don't know how many of you guys know, but I always like to start with kind of a beginning who grace, God has been setting a plan for grace since the fall. He, since Adam and Eve sinned, he'd been setting, he, he atoned for them. Uh, he, you know the story about how they sinned in the garden, and he covered them. He covered their sin, okay? And then he went on, even, even with Noah, even, even you just see his acts of grace for mankind from day one, from day one, okay? Now, <clears throat> God specifically I always like to go back to the children of Israel because that's kind of, I like to use that because the children of Israel is kind of like a story for us. We're his children now. And, and when the Lord came, he, he gave this law. He gave them laws. He, he knew that men were wicked, but he wanted to give them a law, give them something that, that cannot bind them, but show them what was needed. Okay. So uh, most of you guys know the, I like to call them the farce and the Sadducees, but you know might know them as the Pharisees and the Sadducees. So the story of these guys, they spent years perfecting this law. Not only did they have 10 commandments, they added another 600 laws to this. So they added these 600 laws because they said, you know what, this is what we have to do. This is what we need to do to get closer to God. Ever since the fall of man, Man has trying, been trying to find a way to get to God. They've been, he's been putting impossible barriers up to get to God. I mean, I mean, these guys wrote laws that they couldn't even stick to, you know? So it, <laughs> it just, it, it, it's no doubt that when we see today, it's what you have to do. It, it almost makes it unappealing. It, it's kind of like when I was learning to drive, and uh, I thought it was fun and exciting. My dad would come to me, here's what you can't do. You can't be out late. You can't do this. He almost took the fun of driving away from me. And, and you know, by natural, you know that old saying, don't think of the pink elephant? Yeah, I did everything he said not to do. Came in late, put the car on E, took the car where I wasn't supposed to take it. Because I knew in my heart, even though I wanted to do right, I couldn't do right. But you know what? Thank God for good parents sometimes. Of course, uh, there's still consequences, though, for them. So. Some of them I got my butt tore up, and I still and got restricted, got the keys taken. All right? <laughs> so I, I, just, I just like to think of, I, I was talking to Pastor about this, too. And I sometimes tend to think, what is it that I can do? What is it? And I would always tell, and I used to tell him all the time. He had grace with me because I always tell him, Pastor, I'm not the guy that's going to get in the front. I'm not going to get up here and speak. And God has been convicting me because everything was what I could do, what I wouldn't do, how I would do it. And thank God for his grace, for his grace. He's, he's kept me through so many things. Um, just, just growing up, just growing up in the streets of Chicago, I had to think back to how he protected me. Uh, I, I've been in a couple of shootouts. I haven't told you guys some of these things. Um, just things that I took for granted because I was being a knucklehead. 
Okay. I like to say, now I want y'all to have some grace with me today too, okay? So I'm going to try my best to show you how we need his grace and we to extend grace. The beautiful thing about the cross is God came down to us because we could never get to him. And some of us as Christians, we need to, as brothers and sisters, we need to remember that. Sometimes we are so holy that we forget that it's God's grace that has kept us. And then we tend to be like the Sadducees and Pharisees. We cast judgment. You know, I don't drink. I don't smoke. You don't do this. You shouldn't curse. You don't dance. You don't, you know, we put these restrictions. And then we wonder why churches are kind of empty. Well, the church is a hospital. It's all, it always has been a hospital. It's supposed to be a place where people know that they void of something and can come in here. It, I, I should never be able to look at myself and say, well, you know what, and I've done it. I'm not going to lie to you. I'll be transparent. Well, you know what, I, you know, I don't, I've never done drugs. You know, I've, uh, uh, I paid my taxes almost on time. Uh, you know, I do these things, and, and I look at it, look, look, I got a better job than you do. I, I've done all these things. And yet, the truth of the matter is, it's not enough. One of my teachers in school, <laughs> and I'm not going to mention his name, uh, but uh, he's, he always would say when he would teach us, he said, you know what? I don't chew, I don't dip, I don't smoke, I don't curse, I don't even drink coffee. And I'm like, I drink a lot of coffee, so I'm like, oh my Lord, is that a requirement? <laughs> and he turned around and he said, but you know what? Who wants to be the greatest sinner that ever went to hell? Who, we don't think of it like that because it's nothing that we can do that will get us in God's grace. It's what he extended to us. All right. <clears throat> so 2 Corinthians 12, verse 9. And he said, my grace is sufficient for you. My strength is made perfect in your weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I would rather boast in my affirmities than the power of that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Basically what this means is, when we're doing things in our own ability, it's us saying that we, we don't need God. Amen. But that's why he's saying this grace, he gives us the ability. See, my problem was, I wanted to do things my way. I wanted to answer God's call my way. I, and then when I didn't answer it, I would look and say, well, so-and-so didn't do this, why well, I have to do this? And then God was like, hey, you can never do it on yourself. And the reason why I don't want you to do that, because I don't want you to ever boast and say that, that this is what you did. Amen. Some of you guys know me as a business owner. And one thing in business that we were always taught, taught is, or at least that I know of saying is, you have to see it before you can have it. All right? It's amazing that the world used most of the concepts of faith. Maybe not much grace. But they use a lot of faith to say, this is what I have. I see it before I can have it. See, here's the beautiful thing about grace and faith. By faith, we receive grace. By faith, we've been made righteous. By faith, we have all these wonderful blessings. So that's not something that you can acquire yourself and, and put it out there. We, we just can't. We just can't. So uh, <laughs> I, I was just sitting here thinking about there are times when... Uh, I took some heavy losses in business sometimes. And I, uh, well, for example, I've had people theft in business. Most business owners know what I'm talking about. Promise to pay and don't pay. And, and I could take those things literally and be offended with it. Oh, by the way, the enemy to grace is offense, just so you know. Just so you know. You can hold it and not give it and not receive it. So... You know, I, I took some, some, some serious losses in business. And I would, I, for 30 seconds, I'm, I thank God for his grace to grow me. Because when I did it, when I took those losses, he'd always remind me, first of all, it's not yours, Darius. It's mine. I've given it to you. Everything that you have, I've given it to you. Learn to love people where they are. Learn to, learn to just accept them for who they are. So I'll tell you right now, most people see me in the community. Most of my friends are homeless, okay? I got a lot of guys that's homeless, a lot of guys that smoke, drink, do those things. Now, I'm not saying that to condone that that's what they do, but we are hard to love people where they're at. Now, I'm not saying go out there and you, and you go get 
you know, get like them and do those things and, and just get crazy with them in it. But what I am saying is be open enough that they can say, hey, you know what? You stuck with me. You stuck out with me. You know why? Because God's grace is the ability for you to do it. And when he sees that ability, he sees you. And when that person is going through something, guess who they're going to come back to? But if I'm condemning you, like, yeah, you shouldn't be smoking, you shouldn't be drinking, you shouldn't be doing all this and that, and I'm passing judgment, who wants to be around that? Who, you, I, I, I think back about times, uh, me and my brother go back, back and forth with this all the time. <laughs> and we, this stuff comes up periodically. And he, <laughs> I try not to do it, but me and my brother, that's our relationship a little bit, but we laugh about it. I always say, you remember back in 1979 when you had broke that thing and you blamed it on me, and then I got a whooping with this, and, and I mean, holding it, and we 30 and 40 years old still having this conversation. We laugh about it, but the truth of the matter is how many of us are holding people's past transgressions on them? And, and, and we want the forgiveness of God. I, I want to share another verse with you here real quick. Let's see. And it is, uh, there was a story about the, uh, the talents, and I'm, I'm trying to pull that verse up, but the, the story goes, there was a servant who had owed his master some money. He owed his master some money, and the master, uh, he said, look, I can't pay this debt right now. I, I just don't have the money. Uh, I'm so sorry I owe you. And in those days, anybody know in the olden days, uh, you were whipped, you were incarcerated for debts. Thank God America ain't on that track right now because uh, we'd be in some serious trouble. But uh, we getting there, though. So let's just pray for our country. But in the meantime of this, the, the, the master said, you know what? You can't pay me this money back. There's no way you can pay me. So because you can't pay me and you've come to me, I'm going to forgive it. I'm going to forgive you of that debt. Okay? Woof. Thank you, because I sure couldn't pay it. Okay? Lo and behold, he had, a, he had somebody up under him. And he said, you know what? You know what, man? I know I owe you this $10, but I, I really I can't pay this $10 right now. It's just it's too much for me. I, this debt, I just cannot pay you. And the same servant that was just relieved for hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of debt, what you mean you can't pay me my $10? How dare you come to me like that and can't pay my $10? You know what? Tell you what, not only I'm going to take all your possessions, I'm going to do all these things I can do to hurt you, to, to, to demean you, to do whatever I can, because that's unacceptable that you can't pay this $10 debt. Well, you know, Pueblo's a small town, right? Pueblo was a small town. It got back. It got, it, it got, it got back to the, the same master. And I, maybe I, I'm, I know I'm mixing it in a little bit. Got back to the same man. Hey, you remember Johnny that you gave that $100,000 debt for? Said, yeah, yeah. What's going on with that? Well, I just saw him up the street beating this guy up for 10 bucks. Oh, bring him back in here. Bring him back in here. And so he said, what's this I hear that uh, you won't forgive somebody for, for $10? I just, I just let a $100,000 debt go with you. Told you don't even worry about it. And you can't pay me. He said, well, well, you know, Lord, please. No, you know what? What you should have gotten, now I'm going to do this. So the moral of what I'm saying is this. No matter what somebody has done against you or how they've inflicted something against you, maybe, maybe, maybe you didn't like their hair. Maybe they borrowed something. Maybe they took something. Maybe they offended you in some form or fashion. Remember, there's things that we've done that's greater that God has forgiven us for. And he requires, he requires us to give it back. He requires us to give it back. Okay? So, as I was stating earlier, uh, just, just being transparent and open, because I always want to be authentic when I come to you. I, I for, because I grew up in a Christian home, because I knew what was right and wrong, and I, and I did those things and paid consequences. You know, I, I've been married. I've been a bad husband. I was a bad father. I did a lot of things that wasn't right because a lot of times, I think I told you, I wanted to do things my way. 
And, and they came back. They came back to bite me. And if I could share anything with you about my life, God, every time I would tell them what I could and couldn't do, because, Lord, you can't use me because I've been divorced. Lord, you, you can't use me. I, you know, I, 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 I've, I've, I've been out and been drunk and act stupid and done things, hurt people. And, and the Lord says, you know what? It's not you. It's my grace. My grace is sufficient for you. So I'm just telling you guys this. As, as, you, as you think about why you can't be used, why you shouldn't be used, God can use anybody. God used the woman, the woman that had five husbands at the well. You know, she's trying to get something to drink. He said, woman, if you knew who I was, you'd be going after the water. So what I'm saying is no matter where you guys are in your lives, whether you be on your first, third, fifth, tenth marriage, get some counseling, by the way, but, uh, <laughs> or, or whether you have uh, three or four different kids by baby's daddy's baby's mommy, God can still use you. He wants to use you. He didn't come here for a fixed world. He came here for a broken world. He came here to say that because I always saw, when I hear people say, I don't do this, I don't do that, I would get convicted. I would get, I would get like, oh, man, I, I can't live up to that. See, the other piece against grace is this. We have an enemy that comes to steal, kill, and destroy. You know what he uses in opposition to grace? He used condemnation. He used shame and guilt. You see, God didn't come to condemn the world. He came to love them. Sometimes religion talks about condemnation of what you don't do and don't do. But what God grace is and love is to pull us out of that. Because he wants to use us. He wants to be able to say, hey, you know what? It doesn't matter how many times you've been married. It doesn't matter how many times you fell off the wagon. It doesn't matter how many times you couldn't keep the promises that you said. You know what? My grace is sufficient enough. So <clears throat> the, the way we're going to fix that, I, I talked to one of my mentors last night when I was giving this message, before I was giving this message, and I asked him, I said, hey, uh, I, I just want a couple of thoughts. And he said, he said, let me tell you something, how good the Holy Ghost is and how good grace is. There was a young man that he was mentoring that got saved. Profanity was his thing. And uh, he would be preaching God's word with profanity. And so many times, my mentor wanted to correct him. He was like, you can't do that. Now, he did reach out with a couple of scriptures to show him that. But it took a, a guy a while to figure it out. And then about a year later, the guy came back. He said, you know what? Thank you for being patient with me because the Lord convicted me of what I was using and doing. And I said, well, what's the moral of the story? See, sometimes you need to just shut up and let God do what he needs to do. Yeah. Yeah. Love is not condoning bad behavior, but love is giving scripture. It's kind of like going to the, to the doctor, right? If, if, you, if, if you got something going on, what does a doctor normally do? He, he'll, you'll tell him what the issue is, what the problem is. He may ask a couple of clarifying questions, but what he does is, let me give you something to fit that. He don't beat you up about did you take it or not, because he'll know when you come back that either you did or you didn't. But that's how God's word is. God's word is just that good. Okay. So... <clears throat> So I, I was just thinking back to how I, uh, as I was coming to this, this piece of my life, as Pastor illustrated about being used and wanting to be, be used, God, uh, God had a covenant, and I'm going to go back to the Abraham covenant and the new covenant. So he was talking about promises last week, all the promises that we have. The one thing that I will iterate to us that I always hear, and I, and I think I've told him this a couple of times, we always say that we're sinners. We're sinners. It's true that we have sinned, but when you come into his family, he no longer treats you as a sinner. He treats you as an adopted child, as, a, as, 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 a, as a, a one of his. Now, what would a marriage be like if I got married and I told my wife I love her, and, and I actually do love her, and she's, she takes on my name, Miss Gauthier, but she continues to call herself, I'm Miss Jackson, don't call me Miss Gauthier. I would probably start wondering, what is going on? You, we're family, we're a bond. Why are you still continue to call yourself 
Miss Jackson when you're Miss Gaucher. Oh, she said, that, that's, that's easy because I don't want you to have to do anything for me. I don't want you to have to do any of these things. See, sin is a sin nature. When we don't realize the grace of God, we will continue to have that nature. We'll have the nature of thinking that, you know what, I'm always going to sin. I'm always going to do this. Grace covers that. That's true. But grace should always put us in a position of righteousness. And righteousness is basically that, hey, righteousness by, you're righteousness by faith. You're righteous by everything you do. It, it, you can't be in a, a rich man's house still saying you're poor. If your father is rich and he adopted you, why would you go around? I'm still broke. I have no money. I can't do this. I can't do that. If, you, if we are the adopted children of God, we take on his nature. We take on his love. We have everything that he's had. If we're the body of Christ and Jesus died to redeem us from all these sick, sick hurt, habits, and hang-ups, why are we still hanging on to them? Yes, will it probably take time for some of us to go through this? And this is where grace and mercy is. Somebody may be able to turn cold turkey tonight, stop smoking, and stop drinking. But some of us may take years, a year, six years, whatever, but God knows our heart. This is where our heart is at. It's not willingly sinning, saying, you know what, I can go out here, I know it's Monday, I'm going to get tore up on Wednesday, and then Friday I'll... No, that's not what he's saying. He knows that we struggle with things, but he wants to take that struggle. He gives us the ability. That's what that's about. Okay. But, you know, we also have to, to humble ourselves and have that humility and say, Lord, I need you. I need you. All right. Uh, I want to talk a couple more scriptures here. And Galatians uh, 3 and 19. I want to kind of talk about the law and, and grace. Okay, Galatians 13, Thir I'm sorry, Galatians 3 and 19. Hopefully everybody's got it there. Okay, I still hear a couple of them. Wherefore then serveth the law? It was added because of transgressions, till the seed should come to whom the promise was made. And it was ordained by the angels in the hand of the mediator. Now, I'm going to go one more verse. Now a mediator is not a mediator of one, but God is one. The, I'm going to go a little bit further, I guess. I only had that one verse, but I'll go with this. Is the law then against the promises of God? God forbid. For if there had been a law given which could have given life very righteously, it should have been by the law. But the scripture have concluded all under the sin that promised by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. So, basically, if, if we say what we do, how we don't need this and we don't have to have this, then there was no reason for Christ to come. There was no reason for him to die on the cross. So he became sin for us he, because he says that none of us are good. You know, we always hear that old saying that everybody's good. I hear it all the time when I'm out and I get to speak to some people, and they will always tell me, you know, I, I, always, I go to church. I'm, I'm, I'm relatively good. You know, God knows my heart and knows I'm good. Well, here's how I'm going to prove that we're not good. Even babies that will fight with each other, they will fight and take toys out of They've never been taught right from wrong, but they will fight because that's the nature of their heart. That is just the nature of their heart. Okay. <clears throat> and, uh, another scripture I want to cover is Ezekiel 18.31. Cast away from all your transgressions which you have committed and get yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. Okay. So this is Ezekiel. He's, he's talking what the problem is with mankind. See, we've been taught that we can kind of do things, but, but the truth of the matter is it's our heart. It's the condition of our heart. Our heart is what keeps us caught in certain situations. Our heart is what gets us in trouble. 
Our hearts, you can't see. You can't see the issues of my heart. You can't see. Some of you, some of you ladies do this sometimes. Oh, girl, I like that outfit you got on. In the back of your head, oh, she looks so awful. I can't believe she wore that. I was going to get that dress myself. Oh, girl, you, you killing it, girl. You killing it. You see, so, so we know when our heart is, is wrong. We try to appease those things. You know what? Oh, I like that new car you just got. She didn't deserve that car. No. She don't deserve none of that stuff. I can't believe God would bless her with that car and not bless me. I've been praying for years for the car. But Lord, Lord, I've done more. I, I, I tired all the time. You know what I'm saying? I go to church every Sunday on time. I even sing in the choir. And she barely come to church on time. You know? <laughs> So, so, I mean, but this is how we compare ourselves. We don't say it openly. No one, no, never, none of us will ever openly compare ourselves to someone. But the truth of the matter is, that's where our heart takes us. If we're not guided by God's grace and love, that's where we take it to. Okay? So, I hope I didn't offend anybody if uh, they've been paying their tithes and they ain't got a new car or something. I don't know. All right, I want to add on to uh, last uh, week's sermon about promises. Here's what I love about God's grace and, and, and God's mercy. God's grace gives us a new pure, purity. God's grace gives us another chance, gives us, keeps us in right standing with it. Even when we're wrong, he keeps us in right standing. So I want you guys to start thinking about the purity that he gives you, the righteousness that he gives you. Uh, I, I want you to be thinking about that. See, we are sanctified through God's grace by Christ. It's our spirit man. See, this flesh is always going to be sin. That's why we had to be born again. So, but the more you read, the more you get God's word, the, the more you know that his word was made flesh, the, the more you hear it, that's what starts to click in, click in. That This is what changes. You see, the word should be convicting you. The word is, didn't come to condemn you. It came to convict you that, hey, maybe I'm doing something wrong. Maybe, maybe I'm doing this not right. I remember when I was a soldier, and I was a knucklehead soldier, by the way, too. So, I mean, I, th I got a chance to serve my country, but I came in being rebellious even in the military. Even though I knew right, I came in being rebellious in the military. And thank God for a praying mom again. Praying mom, there was some times I was not supposed to, I mean, I was supposed to literally be put out. And God really dealt with me even then. Even though I wasn't saved, he was still working his way around me. And uh, <laughs> it's a funny thing how we always try not to be something and then we get something. So, for example, it's like I'm going to do better than my parents. I'm sure some of y'all said that. I know more than my parents. And then we find out when we have to humble ourselves, oh, my goodness, I can't believe I did my parents like that. Well, I was a young private. I, I broke all the rules, hanging out, partying, getting in trouble, just for no, I did. So I worked really well. When I was on my job, you couldn't beat me at my job. But when I was out of my uniform, I was somebody else. And they would tell me, who are you? Like, like you do great work, but come Friday, and you turn into the devil himself. And so thank God that his mercy <laughs> kept me. And, and uh, when I made it back to the States, I, I started realizing that, yeah, I need to clean my act up. I need to do something. I mean, I got an opportunity. It given me chances. And I became a leader. I ended up getting my sergeant stripes, non-com. Some of you guys know what that means. And uh, I won't forget, I was like, whew. I had a little, little squad of guys, just different things. And uh, <laughs> I won't forget that uh, the knuckleheads that would come through you, you know, you get what you pay for, right? So the knuckleheads that would come through, they would be like, oh, I can't deal with the soldier. Well, let's get him to Sergeant Gaucher. He, he can handle them. And I would always get the knuckleheads. And, and, and I would get mad about it sometimes. Like, I would vent by myself. I have my own people. Man, I can't believe they gave me these soldiers. I can't get my mission done. This is crazy. And, and the Lord would go back and say, remember you. You were, you were that knucklehead. As pastors say, you were that dirt bag. <laughs> for lack of a better word because that's what we use in the military we actually use the word in the military dirt bag and, and I would keep getting them and they would keep coming but I had the patience to keep them and I remember my supervisor one time told me he said you know why you tend to get the dirt bags I said no I don't know 
So because you have a lot of patience, um, you, you can, you been there, you did that. They don't know exactly everything I did, by the way. So, but the Lord knew. So the Lord was testing my grace and mercy with these guys. There was only a few times I can think of when God came and when he came to me and, uh, and I said, I can't do this. And they would go back to my commanding officer. Ah, I didn't give a chance. No, go shake and take a lot of abuse. So if he don't like you, you're really in trouble. <laughs> All right. But listen, I'm, I'm not going to keep you too long. I, I just want to let you know a couple of more promises of God. And this is what it is. See, every time he gives us a chance, he moves us into a different place for uh, uh, just another chance. You know, the promise, too, when God's giving you grace, he's giving you a chance to be a new person. Okay. He's giving you a new heart, a new spirit. Spirit. We all become a new creation under God's grace. Uh, 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. I'm not going to make you guys turn because I don't want to keep you here all day. But he gives us a new heart. He gives us, he gives us a, a new will, a, a new, a new a being. And that's really what he's trying to do for us. And then God turns around. Not only does he give us a new heart, he gives us a new passion. See, we have to sometimes pray, Lord, not my will, but your will be done. But he gives us that ability. That's what grace is doing. Grace is showing us our errors and making us want to love him. Grace is giving us a chance to redeem ourselves through Christ. Not through another man, not through another situation, but it's giving you a chance to become an overcomer. That's what grace is doing. See, men may fail you, but God will never fail you, okay? God will never fail you, Okay? And this new covenant that we have is, is based on all the new promises. So we like to use Israel laws, but you know the truth of the matter was? We was not in Israel like uh, Israel's days. So that law really was for them. But the truth of the matter is that was a shadow for us as God's people to show us that, hey, you have a new covenant. I give you a new covenant that I will live in you. See, the only time that they could be used is when they were clean, when they were pure, or God wanted to move upon them. But now we're the temple. We're God's temple. We're God's instrument now. And he tends to use us for what he wants. And he's here. So we don't have to. I, I hear sometimes the songs that say, never leave me. I, I, I think we think of that got that wrong. He said he never will leave you. That was a promise he gave you. So if, if, if it's a promise that I'll never leave you, we got to stop saying, Lord, don't leave me. Lord, how do you want to use me while you're with me? Lord, what do you want me to do that I can't do in my own strength that you give me the grace to do? Okay? All right. And then um, <clears throat> there's a, a, a couple of things. And, and really my, my, my sermon or my message today is really more or less make sure we extend the grace that God has given to us. And here's, a, here's one that I'm going to just read for you. And I, and I, I like it because... Sometimes we, we forget. So Galatians 6, 1 and 3. Brother, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such one to a spirit of meekness, considering yourself, lest thou be tempted. Bear ye one another's burdens, so you will fulfill the law of Christ. See, this is the new law. This is the law of Christ now. This is, this is him saying that, hey, this is God just telling us, hey, we got to look out for each other. For, for if a man think of himself to be something that he's not, he deceives himself. Remember what I was telling you earlier? I did better than you. I did those things. I still have my own hangups. So we are to cover each other. We are to cover each other with God's grace. As brothers and sisters, I don't care. I'm, I'll be honest with you right now. If I got something out there with you guys, please forgive me. Come to me and let me know. But I'm going to tell you right now, I've forgiven anybody out here that has done anything to me. That's where I stand. You can't take my love. You can't take God's grace from me because I don't want him to take anything from me that he already promised me to have. You know, before you come to this altar, you know, you, you ask for that forgiveness. You put your gift down at the altar. I've left my gift up here so God can use me. I no longer say... I don't want to be used, Lord. Find a way to use me. Find a way for me to help whoever that I'm close to, my friends, my family, whoever it may be. All right? And then I'm going to close out with this one. And um, one of my favorite verses, some of you guys have heard me say this. And it's 1 Corinthians 13, 4 
through 9. And uh, thank you. So I guess the, the crew is up here, so my time is up here. So, but here we go. Again, thank you for your grace and mercy. <laughs> All right, 1 Corinthians 13, 4. And I'm in the King James Bible. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envy not. Charity want, wanteth not itself, is not puffed up, nor does it behave itself unseemly. It seek not its own, is not pro easily provoked. Think of no evil, rejoice not in iniquity, but rejoices in truth and beareth all things. Believe all things, hope all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth, but whatever be prophesied, they shall fail. Whether they shall be in tongues, they shall cease. Whether they be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. So basically, the message I wanted to share to you guys today was God is nothing but love. If you notice, he doesn't hold our transgressions. He doesn't hold our faults against us. He doesn't make us remember them. He, matter of fact, he, he sees the best and wants the best in us and hope the best in us because he wants us to be with him. He wants us to be a part of his body. So I don't know if I touched anybody today. Uh, I'm going to give pastor a chance to come up here, but I just tell you this. You can be used in whatever condition you're in. Do not let the devil deceive you that or condemn you or put guilt on you that because I've been married four times, because I haven't been sober or this or that, God can still use you. God can still take your heart and turn it into something because we are his creation and he wants to work through us. He wants us to reach those that are like us. He never bought a price for us to be to ourselves and by ourselves. He said, go out and share my grace, my love, and my mercy. So I don't know who's here today that, that hey, you know what? I've been through so much. I've been addicted to drugs. I've been, I, I struggle with war and lust. I struggle with all these different things. Let me tell you, God still loves you. He loved you before you were born. He's going to love you after. And his grace is sufficient for today. So here's the, here's the beautiful part about God's grace. The day that you get this, every day that you get the breath to breathe, that's your grace. That's that opportunity. That's your time. That's your moment. Because tomorrow's not promised to any of us. So if we don't take those advantages that we can, we can almost smack grace in the face. But God still will love us. But he says, I will never take your will. I will always give you permission. So if you have that in your heart or desire or just, Lord, you know, I got things I struggle with. And I'll tell you what, this is not just for sinners. There's still some saints that still go through things, that still struggle through things. Because remember, he knows the condition of your heart. He knows that, that what our lusts are, what our weaknesses are. He knows our anger issues. He knows our gossip issues, our gluttony issues, because they're all the sins. Every last one of them is a sin. There's not a such thing as a sin that's small that will keep, well, you know, I sin a little bit. But God covers all sin. His grace covers everything. So if you're sitting here in this house today, and, and you know that those are the things that you struggle with or don't struggle with or whatever it is, Man, just come up here and turn it over to God. I, I don't know who we have as prayer partners out here today, but, man, I just encourage you. If I let God use me, he can let him use you. Sure, I failed as a dad. I failed as a husband. But you know what? God has not failed me. And he said I haven't failed him. So that's who you want to hear. Well done. Well done. So if anybody's in the house, I, I just pray that you give your heart to God. And if there's anybody that struggles with anything, I don't care what it is, alcohol, anger, just, just anything that you can struggle with, man, give it to God so he can just replace it, give you those new promises, those new commitments. Thank you guys for your time. Amen. Wasn't that good this morning? Amen. Did you guys enjoy that? Amen. Hallelujah. You know, one of the things I appreciate what Brother Darius said was that grace needs to be shown within the, the community of faith, within the church, within the body of Christ here. And like he said earlier in his message, he says, sometimes we can be so quick to judge and that's not part of God's heart. Amen. Thank you so much. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to ask you to stand with me this morning.
And you know, one of the things that I just want to encourage you with is this. You may not realize this, but in this house, in this fellowship, you wouldn't believe who's amongst you. You wouldn't believe what God's grace has done in somebody's life that's right around you. If you knew that, you'd probably say, oh man, I don't want to go to that church. But you see, what we found that God's grace is so real that He has reached out to so many of us and He saved us and He delivered us out of that darkness, out of sin. There's so many powerful testimonies in this church. If we were to let you hear them, and we should, you would be amazed at what God has done. All those from what we would think would be from the worst of the worst to those who are the worst of the worst. You see, we can go all the way from someone who is a murderer that we may think is the worst of the worst, but let me tell you who the worst of the worst could really be. The goody-goody. The one who says, oh, I've never done that, oh, I've never done that. But God had to save even the goody-goody, which could be the worst of the worst. <laughs> because sometimes we're so blind, but God saved us. And that's what I thank God about here. So here's the message that Brother Darius shared, is we're all still in process. And God's grace that has been shown to us, we need to show to each other. Because... If we were to really open up and say, this is what I have done, or this is what I do, would we still accept each other? Would we still extend that grace? And if you can say, yes, I would, because of what God's done in you, you're in the right place. Father, thank you so much for the message from your servant this morning. Thank you, Lord, for reminding us and how great your grace is. You truly have a good grace, a great grace that has been shown to us. Now let us show it to one another. Let us extend that same grace to the person in this sanctuary that we can ex exercise our faith to say to our brother, I love you for who you are. No matter what you've done or no matter what you're doing, because God still loves you, and I love you. And I want to believe God to continue to work in both of our lives. Lord, I truly believe right now, Lord, that we can have an opportunity to pray for somebody that's maybe right near us. And just be able to, Lord, just extend that grace that you have extended to us and extend it to them in a simple prayer that simply says, Lord, bless us and keep working in us. Lord, because we need that grace to show this world that, God, you are really working and you are really real in lives that are so imperfect, so, as my brother said, we're all created from dirt. From dust, dirt we came to, dust we came to, dust we will return. So, Lord, we just thank you because it's by your grace that we have righteousness, not by our own works, but because of Jesus. I want to encourage you this morning, church. Would you turn to somebody next to you and just, you may not know them, you may know them. Would you just extend a prayer to them? Can you just go to somebody and move out of your seats or stay in that little area where you're at and just say, brother, sister, can I pray with you? Can we just pray together that God keeps working in us and that we can extend grace to each other, that we can extend this godly grace to one another as he has extended it to us, that we can grow together in grace. Would you find somebody that you can pray with this morning as the worship team leads us in this song, as Sister Kimmy leads us in this song? Because we're talking about a good grace here this morning. Would you, would you begin to just move to somebody and begin to pray for them? Begin to just say, Lord, keep working in us. We're so imperfect, but God, you're so perfect. We need you to, Lord God, just help us continue to grow in grace and to extend our, your grace to each other. Lord, we need you to keep growing us, maturing us. Lord, so that we can show the world how we love each other and that the world will know that we are truly 
your disciples by the love we have for one another. Lord, let your grace right now, just pray for somebody, find somebody. Find somebody, find somebody to just to extend that grace prayer for with each other this morning. I believe God's listening to your hearts this morning. I believe you, and make sure you pray for one another. Make sure you extend that love. Make sure you just say, Lord, we accept each other for what you're doing in our lives, just for where we are. But Lord, we don't want to stay here. We want to keep growing closer to you. And that's your prayer for your brother, sister. Lord, keep us growing closer to you. Keep helping us, Lord God, in this walk to look like Jesus. That the love of Jesus flows through us to touch our world and let it begin right here. Let the love of Jesus, let the grace of Jesus begin right here in this house. That we can love and extend that mercy and grace because of who you are. Sing it with her, amen. Jesus, light of heaven, friend forever, your kingdom come. In a moment, we're going to end, but I, I want us to pray for an individual. Sister Becky is not her arm. Sister Becky, how is your arm? Does you, do, Are you, amen. Sister Becky, can we pray for you? Amen. There she is. Amen. Would you come on up? And I'm going to ask 
I know there's, a, there's, there's people of faith. Sister Barbara, you're one. Come on up here. I want you to pray for her and anoint her with oil. I, have, I need another woman that I, I just couldn't believe for a healing. I need another woman that, amen. Sister Carol, come on up here. We're going to pray that Becky, she has been experiencing this, this soreness in her left arm, her right arm, I'm sorry. And I'm going to believe you. I want you to join with me as we believe God to heal her. Amen. And we're going to let these ladies of faith that have the trust that God can just re do a miracle right now. Can you believe that with us? Amen. Let's begin to pray. Amen. Father, we just pray right now as my sisters lay hands upon Sister Becky. Lord, there is nothing you can't do. And she needs a divine touch from you right now. Lord, that afflicted arm that has been just causing her extreme pain. Lord, right now in the name of Jesus. According to your word, by the laying on of hands, Lord God, anointing with oil, we're going to believe for that sick person to be well. In this case, Lord, Sister Becky's arm is going to get well right now. We're going to trust you. We're going to believe for that right now in Jesus' name. So, Lord, with the agreement together in this church, and, Lord, agreeing together, Lord, by faith in Christ that you are still a healing Jesus, touch her, heal her. Let healing virtue flow right now upon my sister Becky. In Jesus' name, we believe it to be done. We're going to believe for a testimony of victory, Lord God. We're going to believe for God, for her to just say, Lord, there's been healing in her life on this day. In Jesus' name. Can somebody believe with me and agree with me? Amen. Can you say amen this morning? Amen. Praise God. Amen. Come on, give God praise. We're going to trust God for that. Amen. Let's sing it again. Jesus, pick it up right there. Amen. And then we're going to dismiss, amen? Jesus, our redemption, our salvation is in You know what? I don't know. Is there somebody else that needs a touch and a healing this morning? If you are here this morning, we, I don't want to limit it to Sister Becky. If you are not feeling well, if you are sick or you have something that you need a deliverance for, I want to ask you to come forward. We'll pray for you. Amen. We're going to believe God for a miracle in your life. So we're not ended yet. Amen. So if you can, come on up. And, I, and then if uh, there's more than I can handle, I'm going to need some prayer partners up here with me. Amen. Is there anybody else? Amen. Well, she's going to sing that song, and if you're that person, I'm going to pray for Brother Louie. Amen. I'm going to need somebody to pray for Christine and the sister. Amen. So, amen. You need a touch from God, too, don't you? Amen. I'm going to need some sisters over here to pray with my sis. Amen. Sing it. Oh, 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 
let's believe God for our miracles. Come on, sing it. Creation, everything with breath repeats the sound. All his children, clean hands, your hearts, good grace, good God. His name is Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We wipe all you have. Let the praise go up, let the walls come down. All creation. Everything with breath repeat the sound. Thank you, Lord. Clean hands, pure hearts, good grace, good God. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. Amen. Praise God. How many praise God this morning? Amen. Let's give God praise one more time. Amen. We're believing God for just a miracle that has just taken place up here this morning. Praise God. I'm believing for testimonies. Just remember to continue.